morning. Good morning, good morning. Welcome back on this uh, Saturday morning. Uh, really excited to spend some more time with you this morning. Uh, wow, what a show we had yesterday afternoon. Uh, I think it was the perfect way for us to celebrate 50 episodes in 50 days. Uh, really, what a phenomenal guest Ross Bernstein uh, has been uh, yesterday. And it's really something that uh, if you missed it, you have to go watch the recording. It has absolutely been phenomenal. And uh, also with, um, you know, even Louis van der Merwe on uh, Friday, yo, what feedback we've been getting about his uh, particular episode and, and his interview. So definitely also another one to go check out. I'm going to share some easy links for you if you want to do that uh, later on uh, to be able to go and watch those. Uh, I know it's not always possible to, all, to attend all of these sessions live, but uh, really, really awesome. And uh, I, I strongly suggest that you go and watch those too uh, if you did miss them. So yeah, good morning. Welcome. Uh, I've got a few things to, to announce this morning and a few things I want to share with you. And then obviously I want to get into you know, some of the lessons uh, that uh, we learned during this uh, whole process and how it has applied to you and, and your business and, and what we could all learn from from this. Uh, I think there's some really powerful, powerful uh, ideas there and uh, it's been really awesome, you know, and, and yesterday morning was, it was stressful for me when I didn't go live at eight and I'm going to share some of the lessons that I learned through all of this, exactly how much, you know, sort of, um, just how much energy and things that you can create and opportunities and things that we can create by doing certain things. Uh, so really, really looking forward to sharing that with you uh, today. Uh, let me quickly say good morning to to the people that are that are here. Uh, Raymond, good morning. Welcome. Nice to have you here. Thank you for joining me again today. Kovas Klein, thank you very much. Terence, good morning. Uh, double espresso and I'm ready. Yes, I had a nice coffee on the stoop this morning. So uh, I now... Uh, got some rooibos tea just to balance me out a little bit. Uh, Malcolm, good morning. Um, he says that you need a new title. You have created something really special here. May you and your family, they sacrifice their time with you. Be truly best. Uh, yes. Uh, thanks, Malcolm. I've, I've Like when this morning when I got up, <clears throat> so one of the things that I'm considering, there's sort of two, three things actually that I'm thinking about in terms of the show, because the show is definitely not going to stop is if we should get a, a proper name for the show, uh, you know, Virtual Coffee with Francho was, uh, and I'll, I'll share with you the journey in a second, but it was just, let's just choose a name, you know, there wasn't much thought that went into it. Um, it's that, and then, you know, do we get a name for our community and, and, and all of that, and will that be linked to the name? You know, do we get a theme song, like a proper, proper thing that, that identifies us? I don't know. But those are things that I'm thinking about and, and playing with currently. So thank you for, for that. Good morning, Mark, my friend. Uh, thank you for the congratulations. I really appreciate it. Louis van der Merwe, good morning. Uh, Louis, nice to have you back. Thanks for joining us uh, once again. I must say your episode is getting so much love and, and so much great positive feedback. Well done, man. Uh, there are big things ahead of you, and I'm really, really proud to, to have had you on the show. Um, Tinas, good morning, Tinas. Welcome back. Lekker uh, um, Good morning, Razan. Good morning. And then uh, Mora Mora, good morning, good morning, uh, all the way from Berlin, my friend Johan Fosler. They've also been on the show in the week. It was a great one. Um, yes, it's been a fantastic week, I must say. It's, it's really, it's going to be hard to trump this. Um, you know, I hope I don't get sued for using that word. But, uh, yeah. So, I see uh, it seems like my, uh, my uh, stream is not showing up on LinkedIn this morning. Okay, well, that's cool. We'll just move on swiftly. Um, Louis says, Ignite front on fire. Yes. Uh, I'm actually looking into Ignite and how we're going to make Ignite something even better than what it already is. I've got some great ideas that, I've, that I'm playing around with. So from May onwards, I think the first people, June, the first people need to start renewing uh, their membership for Ignite. Uh, and I will definitely be, be putting some new awesome stuff in there. Uh, good morning, Francis. Very nice to have you here. Thank you for joining me once again. I miss you. Um, Shlanga Nani, good morning. Welcome. Uh, nice to have you here. I really appreciate it. So, yeah. Let me just see if there's anything here in terms of this. There's nothing that I can change here. So, yeah. Sorry, LinkedIn this morning then. If uh, you can't see me, then that is how it is. Alrighty. So, um, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Uh, some announcements uh, quickly uh, that uh, we've got some incredible guests again for this coming week. 
Uh, really, really fortunate. We've got three three guests for, for the week. And um, oh, the one was still confirmed, but it's tentatively confirmed for Friday. Uh, I haven't had a response yet back from him. Uh, but I can say that on Tuesday, we're starting our data series. So I don't think that'll be the entire episode. It will probably be uh, half an hour. And I'll talk about what the new format is going to be uh, for, for the foreseeable. Because I've also decided to go from level five to level four, uh, you know, in terms of the show. So I want to share with you what that looks like. But um, yeah, so we, we're going to be talking data with the guys from Iris. Uh, I'll have Rob Pritchett and Richard Schwickard uh, on the show Um uh, what's his name? Uh, Rob is a uh, he's the business owner of the of of, of advice uh, at uh, at Iris. If I've got that correct, I'll double check myself. And then Richard is uh, the main programmer on on Xplan. Uh, but we're not going to be talking about Xplan. We're not going to be talking about Iris. We're going to be talking about data and the importance of data and how you can use that to build a solid uh, a solid foundation for your business. So yeah, please join us. Um, so let me just take you off the screen there. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna gonna do this. It's gonna be a weekly series. So there will be one episode a week that we are gonna do this with. And we're just gonna be talking about data in general, but the whole host of things. That's why we've got a, a few episodes and we've added some more stuff yesterday as well. Things that are very relevant and things that we can do during this time while we are in lockdown. And I think some of the things I touched on in my 21 things that you can do during lockdown uh, episode as well. But we are going to talk more about that. And as you can see from the picture, this is hopefully going to be fun, very relaxed. And uh, yeah, so so really looking forward to to this conversation. And uh, let me let me just take that off. All right. So um, that's the one uh, that that will be happening on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, uh, I'm very fortunate to have Sandro Forte on the show. He's also an international speaker, and he does a lot of work with MDRT and so forth. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, he's also a financial advisor. Uh, so really another international guest we're going to have on the show. So really looking forward to that one. He's been phenomenal in communicating and, and what are we going to be doing, and et cetera. So really excited to have him here. And then on Friday, we, uh, if uh, it's, he's confirmed, I know he's got a radio interview as well on Friday. So we're just double-checking the times. If it's not Friday, we'll just stand over to next week. But I will confirm hopefully by, by Monday. And that's Douglas Kruger. So th those of you that's been following Douglas, uh, he's a very well-known South African speaker. Uh, he's very well known for talking about owning your industry. So we're going to be talking about that. And he's also got a new book out called Virus Proof Your Small Business uh, During COVID. So yeah, really looking forward to have him on the show as well. So again, another busy week ahead. And uh, really looking forward to chatting to these people and, and you know, getting some insights and some wisdom from them. And that's going to be sort of the idea with the show, you know, see how many uh, people we can get in because I only know so much and I can only do so much. But uh, we're definitely going to be looking at bringing in more people that can add real value to you and your business uh, as well as your relationships with your clients. So, yeah, th that's just where we head it. And, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I just once again want to want to share with you. Uh, please go check out yesterday's episode with uh, Ross. I mean, the feedback is yo, know, it's been phenomenal. The messages, the the emails I got, uh, you know, the 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 buzz on on LinkedIn yesterday after the show and last night, and yo, know, it's just been amazing. Um, you know, there's people that that summaries like Russell O did a, a quick summary of the most important things or, or the biggest lessons that he took from that discussion. Um, yeah, it was just amazing, amazing. And, uh, you know, the, the, please go check that out. Um, I'm going to give you some uh, some uh, easy to remember, and I'm going to do this going forward. So for every single guest that we've got on the show, I'm just going to use their first name uh, as the, the easy link to go and get uh, or to go and watch the episode. So you don't have to ask me for the links or anything. Uh, so Louis van Amerwe, uh, if you want to watch his uh, episode, you can just go always my website, so uh, www.franchadetoy.co.za, so that will always be the same, and then forward slash Louis. Uh, if you go to that address, it'll take you directly to the YouTube video, and you can watch the recording there. And then the same with uh, Ross Bernstein. Uh, Ross is at just Ross, you know, so it's franchadetoy.co.za forward slash Ross. Don't worry, you won't get to Ross from friends. This is Ross Bernstein. Uh, so you can go watch that episode. That hour flew by like I can't tell you. It's it's been been an amazing uh, episode, and I, I couldn't have hoped for a better outcome for the fiftieth episode. So now 
what's happening now is now we're moving on to episode 100. <laughs> okay, so mission 100, here we come. We're definitely going to do it, um, but the format is going to change a little bit. So before I get into what I want to talk to you about today, I do want to just quickly share with you the, um, you know, what the idea is and what we're going to do. So um, from uh, tomorrow on, I'm not going to go live on a Sunday anymore, simply because I do need a break. So yeah, I'm I'm going to skip Sundays, but every other day, uh, well, every day except Sundays, not every other day. Every other day means every second day, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I'm going to go live every single day except Sundays. And also the, the duration of the show is going to change. So it's going to be uh, – I'm thinking about this. So uh, either, either half an hour or 45 minutes, but it's not going, going to be an hour uh, anymore if it's just me speaking. So my, my episodes, and I'm also going to reduce a little bit of the greetings and that. Uh, I'm going to randomly greet people. I'm going to try and greet different people every single day, not the same people over and over. Uh, it is very important uh, for me to say welcome to you. So I will do a general greeting and then also maybe highlight a few people's names, etc., and, and put their comments on the screen and, and so forth. Uh, but I'm going to try and keep that as short as possible and any intros and anything like that so that we can spend at least 25 minutes or so you know, talking about what I really want to talk about and what is important. And um, and then if I've got guests, th those episodes will still be up to an hour uh, as we've as we've done before. So interviews, an hour, just myself, half an hour, 35 minutes maybe, um, so somewhere around about there. Uh, so that's going to be the format going forward. And uh, I will still let everybody know, you know, wh what is coming up and what's going to happen. Uh, I was going to go to weekly, um, you know, after the 50th episode, but... I don't know. We're still in lockdown. We still can't go anywhere. We're still here. Yes, you can go and exercise. Yes, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, but it feels to me like I've built momentum. And this is something that we spoke about quite a lot yesterday. So I want to keep the momentum going, you know, for me and for you. Uh, so this is about us. This is not, not just about me or just about you. It's really about us. And it's it's really been a privilege to to do this. And it feels like I don't want to stop. I'm not, I'm not definitely not there yet. Um, so as lockdown eases. If we go to level three and two and so forth, then I'll consider going weekly. Uh, it has, uh, and I'll also be giving you the feedback on on the survey. Thank you very much. There was 52 people that responded to me. Uh, I've got some very valuable insights. So thank you for that. I'm going to put it into a format so that I can report back to you. So those of you that gave me your email address, I will you'll get it first uh, because you asked for the feedback. So before I discuss it on the show, I will first send you the feedback. And uh, but just thank you for my side. There's there's a whole host, and there's so many, oh, there's so many interesting things that came out of that. That's just giving me wow. Okay, this is the direction that we should be going. All right, cool. So enough about all of this. Please remember to interact in the chat. Uh, please talk to me. Uh, talk to one another. Uh, please uh, give us some love. Please hit the like button. I didn't say anything about this yesterday, um, and I think if I did, we would have had like double the likes that we got on on YouTube. Uh, but yesterday I just felt let's just celebrate and let's just do our thing. Um, I think that was that was most important. So I just want to close this. It's bothering me. All right, then please remember um, to subscribe. You know, if you're on LinkedIn, unfortunately LinkedIn is not working for some reason this morning. Um, let me just see. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's there. So, um, yeah, please remember to connect with me and to subscribe uh, to the channel. I really appreciate it. We're now on 361 or 362 or something like that. So, slowly but surely, we're moving in the right direction. And, uh, yeah, what else? That's, that is about it. All right. So, thank you. That was a 15-minute intro. I'm sorry for for that. But there's so much that I'm so grateful for and so, so many things that I need wanted to share with you. And just, you know, just, again, yo, um Yesterday was absolutely mind-blowing. This whole week, as Johan said, this whole week was absolutely mind-blowing. I don't know what your thoughts are and how you feel uh, about it. Uh, yeah, it, it's been really amazing. Um, so so thank you very much. Um, good morning, Denise and Gary, Elmin, uh, Russell, welcome. Um, <laughs> Russell says, yes, uh, it was amazing and of immense value. Uh, I must say, uh, I mean, I can't even remember half the stuff that he said. It went just like, it was like that. That guy's energy is just amazing. Um, so, yeah, it was really, really like, uh, I'm still like walking on clouds after this week. And uh, that's why I'm back this morning. So I couldn't skip a beat. <laughs> but tomorrow morning, please, I'm not going to be on, on Sunday morning. But from Monday, 8 a.m. onwards, we will be back every day until Saturday. 
and that's how it will will go. All righty, cool stuff. So so let's get started. Um, I think you know, as I said in the intro to to the video or in the in the in the copy of the video when we when we set it up, it is when you think about like when 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 you're in a race and and when you're running or whether it's a it's you, like it's a motorcycle race or a cycle race or you're running a marathon or you're running athletics or you're playing rugby or or whatever it is that you're doing is that you are taught to only focus on where you're going don't look back because in in athletics i don't know who of you have done athletics but if you run and you look back chances of you falling over your own feet or running out of your lane just it's it's almost 100% so you don't want to be doing that. I mean, think if you're running hurdles or something like that. You wouldn't want to be looking back. You don't want to be like, I mean, you have to make your So, um, yeah, um, and that's sort of what we taught. And it goes the same in business. I think you, you get into that into that mission of let's just run and run and just focus on where we're going. And you, we never take the time to just stop and look back for a second. All we want to do is just just keep going, keep going, keep going. You know, the harder I work, the, the better my chances are. The harder I work, the quicker I'll get there. You know, it was very interesting that um, there was something that, that I also listened to in the week where we were saying, like, you know, it, it's important that you need to work hard. It, it's a given. And if you look at the people that are really at the top of their game, they are probably working harder than anyone else. But what are they working on? They're not sitting behind their computers doing emails the whole day. They are working at getting better. They're working on their skills. They're working on their expertise. They're working on, on understanding things better. That is what they're working on the whole time. So if you think about sports people like, you know, throwing hoops, you know, or bowling or just hitting balls, you just want to tennis. If you just want to practice your, 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 your offline, what is that? Your serve. Okay. You know, that's what you want to get better at it. You want to get better at it. That's it. It's not about how long you play tennis. It's about the things that you focus on to get better at. And that is something that I sort of think that we are missing probably. And it's something that I do do from time to time, but I don't believe that I'm doing it enough at all. So it's so important just to take time out to say, well, let's just look back. So I, to do that, you got to go and stand still for a second. Because if you keep on running and you're trying to look back, you can trip over your own feet. So just take some time out. It doesn't have to be a week. It doesn't have to be a month. It doesn't have to be a sabbatical or anything like that. But just take a morning or an hour a day or an hour a week and just stand still and think back about what's happened, reflect on what has happened and where we are going. And that is sort of what I, what I wanted to do today to just sort of, as I sat on the stoop this morning, I was just thinking like, I mean, I literally decided on this topic last night and I only created it at seven this morning. So the image the setup, the words, everything, everything I'm going to share with you, I did this morning at 7 o'clock because I didn't have to overthink it because I've been thinking about it as we've been going through. And it, I wanted to do it in a way that what are the top things that just sprung to my mind without me really going back and analyzing everything that I talked about and all the guests that we had and all of that. Just what are the things that jumped out at me that I can say, wow, you know, this is an, this is enlightening for me. Uh, and how can I then relate that back to what you're doing and, and what can you take away from this? Because ultimately, it's, it's not about just my lessons. It's about what can we learn? What have we all learned? And you're welcome to share with me maybe what has stood out for you during the last 50 days, you know, whether you've been here for all 50 or not. You know, Quibus, it's 51 out of 51. Well done. I'm really, really happy. Raymond, I don't think you're far behind. Elmin, um, you know, Malcolm, there's a few people that's on your on your heels um, so yeah, really, really, it, it's awesome. Um, <clears throat> so let me let me share with you the first, <clears throat> sorry, sort of the first thing that that I learned, and I learned it like sort of in the second week or so. I already realized this that, and I've spoken about this in some of the episodes before, and that is that you just got to start, just start. I mean, when I started, if you go back to episode one, I had no plan. I had no idea what I was. There was no outline. Now to, these days I do this, so I've got an I've got an outline that tells me like what do I want to talk about and what are the most important points that I want to make. But that first one, I had nothing. I just thought I was going to answer questions. That was my whole idea when I started. The plan was you ask questions, I answer them. That was it. And then it was a very quiet, <laughs> well, almost it was almost a very very quiet one hour. Uh, and I, I, in that episode, I realized, like, okay, no, no, Jab, you, you need a plan. But 
I just got started. Just do it. You know, so we are overthinking things way too much. I mean, I always wanted to do this live stuff. I said to my wife last night, you know that I got my LinkedIn approval, you know, um, I got it like in, in, what was it, December or January already. And I never used it. I used it once because they, they want you to go live at least once a month if they approve you in there. It's a beta program. So it's not available to everybody. You got to apply and they approve you. Got to send in proof of what you've done and what you're, what you're planning to do, etc. So I got that going already and I could always have gone live on YouTube. So I always wanted to do this, but I just never did. I just never did anything. And then I got some inspiration from, from Pat Flynn. I've mentioned him before where he decided to go live every single day. And I thought like, you know what, what better time to do this than now? Because, well, hopefully people will have time to watch and then hopefully I will have time to do this. And then also I just wanted to keep myself sane. I, I, I really did it for a very selfish reason and that was just for myself. I wanted to stay, you know, like have something to get up for and, and something to do and, and so forth. I never really thought it was going to become such an important thing in, in a lot of people's lives for which I'm extremely grateful. And, and, and there's a lot of lessons in that as well, So which I'll talk about. Um, I was very worried, you know, was anyone ever going to show up, even though I was just doing it to do something. It, when, when it's a bit weird. It's a bit awkward if you start something like this and there's only one person or no people. Um, you know, that's even worse. So, um, yeah. And, um, yeah, so uh, that was sort of the, the, the thing. But what I learned from this is but just start. Just don't overthink it. Stop stop procrastinating. Stop planning it to the T. You know, just start and learn as you go along. You know, I think we should get away from this whole thing about like we we pretending that we've got everything figured out and we're brave and it's going well with all of us and, you know, we're really weathering the storm at the moment. No, we're not. Okay, this is tough. This is really, really tough. But you just get started. That's the first thing. Yesterday, Ross said, so you can't create momentum if you just sit there. You've got to do something. You've got to just start. So that's the first one that uh, that jumped out at me. The second one, which is really uh, a, a huge lesson, uh, and, and this is something that maybe you picked it up over the over the 50 episodes. You know, Some of you may have known me from before, but I mean, most of you I got to know like via the show. Yesterday, I got a message from somebody saying, Listen, I can't wait to, to have a beer with you because it feels like I already know you. You know, and how amazing is that? Uh, and I'll get to the relationship things as well. But it's amazing, you know, what, what we were able to do via this medium in times where, you know, people don't, maybe didn't even feel like it. So for me, the second thing is that intent and purpose trumps everything else. You know, there may be people that will be, you know, be critical of what you do, or they may think that you're just doing it for yourself, or you're just there to do marketing. You're just there to sell something. Because often those people that wanted to do what, what you are doing are just like, now they're in a space like, oh, no, you know, he or she jumped, you know, they got ahead of me, and they're doing it, now I can't do it. Or, you know, and then they get all, all sort of like, you know, we don't like to see the sun shining over other people always. You know, so that's hard for, for a lot of people. And what I just learned through this is that if, if your intent is pure and your purpose is real and it comes from your heart, anything that comes from here trumps anything else. There is just nothing that can stand in its way. And that is what I learned. Like my intent was to help. My intent was to make a difference. My purpose was to have a purpose, <laughs> um, to be honest. I mean, as I said to you, I wanted something to do. I wanted something to get up for. So there was a bit of like, this is also for me in the beginning. And the more this thing grow, I just realized that I've got to be here every day, whether there's 10 people showing up or whether there's 50 people showing up or 100. It doesn't matter. I've got to be there for someone because one, I made a commitment and, and a promise. And my responsibility strength is really then uh, hitting like, uh, it's on high octane then. So we will be here, you know, but the intent and the purpose behind this is to, for me, it was to help. It was to give people a place to come and vent if they wanted to vent. Uh, it's a place where people could come and build new relationships where they could connect with other people. Okay. That are also in the same business as you that are maybe having the same kind of conversations with your clients, maybe having the same kind of challenges, you know, but also to realize that, no, 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 your challenges are unique in some sense. 
that was the whole intent and the whole purpose behind this. And I, I, I honestly believe that's why this thing started picking up uh, momentum and energy and why it's grown so well and, and why there's so many of you that feel like you are really, really part of this community. I also learned that there's a lot of people watching that I don't know is watching. I do get a WhatsApp every now and then to say, well, this was amazing or that was, and I'm like, whoa, I didn't even know you were here. Or people would say, listen, I've been watching the last few episodes. I don't know they're here because if they don't tell me they're here, I don't know. But there will always be people that will be sitting in the corner and still feel part of the community, even though they don't engage. It is phenomenal what this is doing, uh, I believe. So intent and purpose really trumps everything. And then I think, I don't know, like all these things are big that I want to share with you. <laughs> it's not It's not just that. Um, you know, it is that consistency is really the currency. And and usually when I talk about consistency, I refer back to the Prudential ad of those two guys who climbed this mountain, but in like the one guy just decided every day he's going to travel at least so far. It doesn't matter if it takes him an hour or the entire day, but he's going to travel the same distance regardless of the weather conditions or anything that and then the other guy said no what we're going to do is when it's a storm we're going to sit in our tent and we're going to hide and when it's beautiful weather we're going to go full out we're going to go as far as possible and at the end of the day the guy that was doing the same distance every single day that was the person that that, that got there first um you know so it's not about going hard when times are well and then hiding you gotta you, you gotta keep going so consistency is key you know and i, I felt this like yesterday when we didn't go live in the morning, it is a huge issue for me. It was I was I was still considering going live yesterday morning just for half an hour just to keep that thing going. And then I thought, like, no, this is going to take away from the from this huge thing um, that that we had yesterday afternoon because that's what we've been marketing and been telling people about. Be at three and not at eight. And now I do go live at eight, and now people are confused. So I thought, like, let me just stick to the plan. You know, but it's a huge thing. This consistency thing does, it becomes a habit. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. So hopefully we're going to go and take a walk and do things like that. You know, um, but it's going to be weird for me because it's already become a habit. And, uh, and that's the thing. So if you just start and you're consistent about it, your intent and purpose behind everything is it's pure and it's sincere, comes from the right place. You're already 80 or 85% of the way there. Uh, as far as as that is concerned, then um, I think a big thing that, and I've always known this. I've, we've spoken about this in one of the episodes, and uh, you know. But uh, I think there's it's one thing talking about things and having learned, and I have experienced great great things about this in the past. It's not like I didn't. Um, I had great ones, and then you know, even ones that have been going for ten years, I've just I don't know somewhere something goes wrong, and. And it's 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 one of those things, and I usually take it extremely personal, personally, you know. But but also, I don't know. It's like it, it's hard to work at these things. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about relationships. Relationships are what it's all about. It, it's uh, in business, in life. You know, if if I believe for such a long time that I can do this on my own, I don't need anybody, and and that's great to get started. You don't need anybody to get started. Nobody needs to do you a favor. Nobody needs to, to give you the okay. Nobody needs to support you. To get started, you literally, you literally just need yourself and your belief in yourself. That's all you need. But the one big lesson that I learned is that you can only get so far when you do it on your own. So it's all about the relationships that you form. And it's amazing, you know, um, The and it's sort of the next thing that I'll talk about, but you do things in a certain way and in a certain manner and, and, and you know, you will create new relationships. And sometimes you create a relationship, you know, that are very influential and, and you create a relationship that opens doors for you without you asking, without you even having ever thought about that, you know. Um, and that's the amazing thing about these, these relationships is that, when people believe in what you believe in, and this is something Simon Sinek talks about in 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 what great leaders do or something, uh, what, yeah, what they do to inspire, but he talks about the why, the who, the what, and, and all of that, and that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. They believe in your dream, they believe in your vision, they believe in in what it is that's driving you because they resonate with it, they agree with it, 
they they wish that they could do it that way or maybe they feel like are oh, you there they just want to support you because in supporting you they will also get there uh, but that why is extremely important and through that you are you're attracting the right people you know i mean we've, i've really been able to form the, some great relationships and some of you have never met me before this and and we're talking on whatsapp and we're sending emails and you know helping and, and doing all sorts of stuff and then there are people that are just you know unselfishly connecting me to other people um it is just you know uh, i mean even ross yesterday after the call he said to me listen if i can suggest any anyone that can come on your show or if i can connect you with anybody let me know you know it's amazing i mean i've met the guy in the week <laughs> i've never spoken to him before but i think we really connected there's a lot of things that that we we have in common um and and sort of the geekiness i think <laughs> is some maybe where we resonate a lot as well and he's just such a nice, nice guy, you know. Um, and all of that is possible because Kubis decided out of his own. I mean, I got an email one night. Say, listen, um, don't get excited, but I'm, it may be possible for me to connect you to this guy. And, I mean, I had to go and look up who Ross was or who he is. I looked at the thing and it was 10 minutes later. I, I, I replied to Kubis and said, yes, please. Like, this is a no-brainer. Please, can we, can, if you can make this happen, I'll be, be forever grateful. And he did. I didn't ask him. He, he just offered, you know. And, and that's, that's the power of, of real relationships. Um, I've had relationships with a lot of people and a lot of people have had relationships with me. And it's not about what you can do for one another and what you get out of one another, and that it's 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 a lot it's about a lot more than that, you know. But sometimes there's just people that you connect with that just helps you go to that next level, and this is the one big thing. And I learned this actually like a, a few years back, five five years ago uh, probably. Um, we we did a course, uh, my wife and I, and and in this thing, you know, they were just talking about um, you know like the doors that will be open for you and the resources that will be made available to you. And often those resources, you know, we think that we need to go and find them, but often those resources are the people around us. Because if there's one thing that I learned, it's that people open doors. People make things happen. People connect people to people. It's not nothing. No technology, no social network, social media, none of that stuff connects people. People hold the key to relationships and to connect the right people to one another. And there are people who are very good at that. They are just natural connectors. That is what they do. And I've got a few friends like that where they will just like, oh, I need to introduce you to this one and we need to do this and this. And it's just, and they make it happen. Eh? That's <laughs> the other thing. So, I mean, there's a lot of value in that. So often we feel like when, let's say Quibus did this for me, shit, now I owe Quibus. I need to do something for Quibus. But you know what? Ultimately, it's just maybe I can go and connect someone to someone else now. Um, I can do something for someone else and pay it forward in that way. And I think that's often where we feel, even like Ross yesterday after the show, I said to him, Ross, look, I don't know what I really can do for you, but if there's ever anything, just let me know. You know, um, I mean, and, and that's it. He was so unselfish uh, to, to, for, for everything that he did yesterday. Uh, and and just his willingness uh, to to be on you, and that's the amazing thing um, that that's really like standing out for me. And and there are very well known people that I've that I've contacted, and I've asked. This is what I would love for you to be on the show. Not a response. Not a no. Nothing. And they're all South African. Not a response. And yes, this guy from from America, he knows Quibus very well. And obviously, if Quibus asked him, he's he's more than willing to do that. And if I had to contact him directly. But I think that is the lesson in it. You know, even if you've got something great going, sometimes you, if somebody else can introduce you to that person, and we must think about that in our referrals, also the referrals, referrals that we're looking for, etc. So, you know, this is very, very powerful. And relationships, it's something that I just realized like this is really what it is all about. Uh, it doesn't matter how technologically advanced we get, AI and you know, just, you know, computers making phone calls and appointments and all sorts of stuff. It'll always be be here. And whether we do it for now through a lens, uh, but this is going to translate into, into physical relationships, into face-to-face -face relationships. We will meet. Already spoke to Ronnie Else as well down in Cape Town. Like we said, listen, we're going to have a, a wine together, you know, if I go to Cape Town or, or whatever. And there's a number of people. 
um, that that we said that. So yeah, really looking forward to to meeting all of you uh, for, for for that. Anyway, so let me not. I can talk a whole hour just on on, on this, I guess. But um, the next thing then that really goes with this is, and and this is something you must have experienced yesterday if you were there. Um, you know, and this is that passion attracts. Um, that is a massive, massive differentiator. It's like the amount of passion and energy that you do something with. You know, if you get excited about stuff, if you, I think passion shows how much you love what you do. But it also shows, you know, like just how much you put into it, how much you care about it. You know, and if you get excited about something, then other people will get it. And I always think about uh, Jodine, this friend of mine <laughs> that said to me, you know, I don't know how you can get excited about finance, but even that little bit, like like she gets excited. She doesn't necessarily know what she's getting excited about, but just the fact that I get excited about financial planning is like, oh, okay, there must be something there. And and I think that is also what has been making the difference. And if you go back to relationships, you know, if you if you are passionate about what you do, if if it really, uh, I don't know what the English is for this, but as it your eight stroll, you know, when when you can see it, you can just see passion coming out of somebody, and that they they really love what they do, they really care about what they do. You know, it's something that they're really good at because passion. You often get passionate about something when you get really good at something. Some people will be born with a passion for something, but I can promise you somewhere when you grew up, you were exposed to those things and you you formed a love for it. Uh, and often also passion is created when you realize you're good at something. You maybe not be very good, but it comes easy to you. Those kind of things are when you, we really form a passion. Uh, so so you, it's possible. It is quite possible for whatever it is you're doing, even if you feel you're not passionate about it. And Maybe the reason why you're not feeling passionate about it is because you still need to think a lot about the steps and you still need to think about how do I do this? There's still a lot of uncertainty. But the more you master what it is you're doing, the more you become an expert and the more you become a craftsman in what it is that you do, you're going to become more passionate because it just now comes so naturally and you're so good at it and people are going to thank you for what it is that you're doing. But passion is the thing that attracts the right people. Because people without passion may be inspired and they may become like light, little light from you. But also people who are not that passionate and they have nothing in life that they care about and there's, there's no, they're not on a mission to figure out what it is they can actually be good at and what they do and what they love. You won't attract those kind of people. In fact, you will repel them through your passion. That is, that's just a mere fact. But you will attract the right people, the people that will be on the same mission as you the people that will be be thinking like you, the people that will be supporting you and people that you can support. And that is what passion is going to do. So really be passionate about, about this. Man, I got really, re I've always been like broadcasting and podcasting and, um, you know, uh, I was a DJ back in the day. <laughs> so all of these things, entertaining, all of those things have always been part of what I do. But you get to a point where you maybe think, oh, maybe you're not good enough. You don't have the voice. You don't have the look. You don't have this. You don't have. No, you are you. You are unique. Go and do this stuff. And this is such a, this was the perfect opportunity. And there's still lots of opportunities. Not that you need a pandemic to do this, but to connect to other people. If you do this and you feel like they, this is a place where they can be themselves and where they can connect and where they can belong, that is so, so powerful. And passion is the starting point for, for all of that. Um, yeah, I see there's a whole host of things I wrote down that I'm not talking about. I'm just talking, you know, out of my <laughs> out of my heart at the moment. I just know what the points are uh, on the screen. So so yeah, I'll get to your questions and and, and your comments in a in a in a second. Um, but I think your passion is something that that we definitely feed off one another. Uh, and it's it's amazing if you've got a group of passionate people. I mean, nothing can stop you. You can literally do anything. Uh, in in my opinion. And here's also a big one. And this is something I'll learn. And, and this is, if I go back to some of the biggest lessons here, you're going to see how this pulls through to, to some of these last points that I want to be making. And that is that it doesn't have to take that long. And I'm not talking about it takes me an hour to present a session or another hour, hour and a half, two hours to prepare for this. It's not about that time frame that I'm talking about. But it doesn't have to take long to change your circumstances. It doesn't have to take long to build something significantly. It doesn't have to take long to, to get off the ground. You know, the um, on on Wednesday when we had the SME show, 
I spoke to a lady called Izel van Amerwe from Arcstetics. And uh, she's young. She's 29. But what a phenomenal driven person. So you can go check it out here on the, on the channel. Uh, uh, there's a small business playlist on, on the homepage when you land on my channel. Uh, and it's the one where we're sharing business stories. And uh, she was the second one that, that that I spoke to. And, you know, she was just telling us how she started this business. She started, well, she started before last year, but she formally started really in, in, in March last year. And um, it went very well. But what she did was she really got uh, the first contract she got. She took all that money, you know, got the best PR company in South Africa. And within three months, I think she said three months, six months, three months, that she was in, in so many magazines, on the radio, on, on all, and her business just took off, you know. So there's, there's doing it that way, and it's really amazing, and it's opened some new ideas for me as well. But, I mean, what have we done here with this show now is to just in 50 days, we managed to – I mean, we've had over 90 th in the last 28 days. I mean, I must go back since the start. I'll, I'll get those stats and share them with you. But how many subscribers we've grown by after I couldn't grow for years on YouTube. Um, you know, how consistently we've now got 108 videos on, on YouTube. We've got, um, I mean, in the last 28 days, over 90,000 minutes watched, over 8,000 views of the videos. Um, that's the kind of stuff that happened in 50 days. And Well, that's in the last 28 days. So I must go look at what the last 50, 51 days, what the stats are for that. But it's just amazing how quickly this could happen. And if you go back to we started, okay, we were consistent. You know, we do little by little every single day. So we've got over, it's now 50, after today, 51 hours of content. I can go write a book with everything I've done, with all of the things I've got, I can go and write a book. Um, because I've done, the frameworks are there, the, the content is there, everything is there to just go and do that. And that is some, maybe one of the outflows of this. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but, you know, it's this exponential aggregation that happens when you keep doing a little by little by little every single day. The first day, it feels like nothing. The second day, it feels like nothing. The third, the fourth, the fifth. After the first week, it feels like, no, nah, there was something done. But then you keep, then you like build that momentum we spoke about yesterday. And then you start going. And then you start going. And then, you start looking back and suddenly it's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and now we're 51. And it feels like, it feels like yesterday, right? I mean, it's almost two months. It's almost two months, but it feels like yesterday. It literally feels to me like we started yesterday. But isn't that a powerful lesson to take away from this? That often we think like it's going to take years to build this. And Louis said in his episode on Friday that, you know what? It doesn't take three years to build a practice. It takes 10 years. So you better get started because that, those 10 years are going to go, go by like that. Take what you've got and what you've learned up to this point and say, okay, the same question I asked Louis yesterday. If I had to start over today, how would I do it? What would I do differently? And go do that. It doesn't mean that you need to fire all your clients. It doesn't mean that you need to, to sell everything you've got and start from scratch. No. We have this unique opportunity in this business that we can do things. If we make a decision to do things differently from today, we can do it differently from today. Go do that. Really take the time to go and sit. And this is the perfect time for that. I know you're busy. I know you're taking a lot of phone calls and team meetings and Zoom meetings and freaking WhatsApp calls and, and all sorts of stuff. I know, I know, because I speak to many advisors and I can hear they're tired and it's just like the one thing after the next, after the next. I get it. But somewhere you need to take a Saturday then or a Saturday morning or something and say, let me just see, you know, with what I know, how would I do it differently? If I could wipe the canvas clean, how would I do it differently? Just draw a picture, draw a mind map, do something like that. And maybe there's new inspiration there for you, but then just also realize like what you know now and where you are now, it doesn't have to take you that long to, to get to the next level. Um, and also you go back, we can look at all these things, you know, um, if you're intent and purpose uh, and you're consistent, uh, you've got the right relationships, you're going to attract the right people. If you are passionate, if you can ignite that passion again and you can go full out with that, you know, you can do this. Okay. Some of you are doing this. Uh, but for those of you that feel like, no, you're not there 
and it feels like you've lost a bit of this passion or a bit of your fire or a bit of your drive, a bit of your energy, a bit of your spark, you can get it back and you can get it back quickly. Just stand still, look back, see how far you've come. Appreciate how far you've come. Appreciate the hard times. We'd never learn when it's going well. Appreciate the hard times and the things that you've that you were able to experience and that things happened to you. And then look at the things that you can really be grateful for, even though it may be the toughest time you've ever had in your life. Maybe you were unfortunate to have much worse things that you had to go through in your life before. But really, what are the things that we can be grateful for? You know? And I'm not going to get into that because I'm going to get emotional again if I start saying the things that I'm grateful for. But go do that. That is such an, like, an, an inspiration comes from the inside. That's why it starts with in. It comes from inside, and there's nothing more powerful than that. Sometimes we lose it a little bit, but we've got to reignite that. Righty. And then this is also a big one, that giving and serving will save you. This is also something that came out yesterday. You know, Ross said, it's, this is not the time to be selling. I asked him the question, should we be selling harder than ever before now? Because it feels like it, like, oh, crap, there's no money coming in. So now I've got to put in double the work and double the effort. And now if I ever didn't want to take no for an answer, then this is the time. And you are saying, like, listen, this is the time to be giving and serving. And he was talking about philanthropy and all sorts of stuff. And it wasn't about your money. It wasn't about donations. It wasn't about anything like that. It was about giving your time, possibly. You know, because if we are able to do that, you know, and some people are uncomfortable with that. I'm uncomfortable with going to places the way I've never been before and things like that. It is very uncomfortable for me. Okay, so this is my way of giving and serving. But, you know, you take that step and you go – out and you see how you can help people and here's my biggest thing around this is that when you do this i'm i'm a, I'm a, I have a very strong opinion that you don't go and announce it to the world you don't go out and say oh look i'm painting the dark shelter and i'm doing this and i'm doing that because i'm then questioning your intent and your purpose behind that it's great if other people will go and say and often you know what if you go there you don't even ask them to, to say something about it because the moment, I mean, if I go there and, and, and I say, listen, uh, this is what we want to do. Let's just say um, you want to bring, I'll just, I don't know what's going to be a problem, but let's just say food parcels, for example. But do you then ask them, but please, will you say something on your social media pages? Or please, will you, you know, maybe let the, the newspaper know or do just something? What is your intent and purpose behind that? versus just going and doing it because you want to give, because you want to serve, because you want to help. And then those, I can promise you nine out of 10 or eight out of 10 of them, because a lot of them are also so fixed, like they're in the middle of these challenges they've got that they don't think about saying anything about what you've done for them. And that's okay. Because I can promise you that what comes back to you and what the way that you feel and how, what it does for you when you do do those things is so much more powerful than the marketing you maybe thought you were going to get from it or the marketing that you thought you wanted from that or, or the marketing that you intended to get from this. So we need to, if you want to give and serve, then that's what you need to do. You need to give and serve with expectation of not getting anything in return because then you're doing it for the right reason. But if you're expecting something in return, one, you will definitely be disappointed. Number two is, there's no real relationship going to form there because people are going to, oh, you're just doing this because you actually the one who wants to look great. You know, I've seen that picture where people, it was an animation, but somebody is taking like a selfie of them of where they are handing out food parcels to somebody during this time. And they, then this, this family stands there and they obviously need the food and all of that, but it's exactly what's happening. So don't do that. Don't do that. Um, when you want to help, help. If you want to serve, serve. If you want to give, give. If other people feel that they want to talk about you and what it is that you did for them, et cetera, then that will be so, so powerful because the relationship between you and them is going to be solid and you're going to get the recognition anyway. Okay? But don't expect it. Don't want it. Then you're there for the right reason and then, then you have a real impact and that is when you save yourself. That is when things really, really uh, mean something to you as well. And you may not realize it in the moment. But you will realize it uh, soon thereafter. Alrighty, so <laughs> yeah, that's my my prayer for this morning. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, uh, guys, for for all the support and and everything. I really appreciate it. 
Um, I'm really looking forward to where we're going. Uh, I will give you feedback from the server. As I said, there's been fantastic insights, uh, and it really helps me to form the structure of the show going forward, when it will be, how often it will be, uh, you know, sort of what we want to do, uh, etc. So, so definitely going to to do that. Um, <laughs> Quibbers, yes, I'm glad Momentum had uh, uh, LinkedIn had Momentum yesterday. Yes, uh, <laughs> I'm just as glad. Maybe we broke it. Who knows? Um, so, Francho, very true on silent listeners or viewers. I've found that I've committed followers and connections on social media who over time introduce themselves to me with gratitude. Yes, it's so powerful, Quibbers, because I, I think a lot of these people, I mean, if I think about myself, there's so many people that I would want to walk up to and say, hi, I'm Francho, but I just never have the guts. And it's the same on social media. You know, people are afraid and they think that you know, you know, like what, what would you think of them or that they can't do that, you know, that you need to be at a certain level before you can connect with this person or talk to this person. And it's a huge mistake because, you know, like people like yourself is like just open to like talk to me and you're so unselfish and you're so, so just, you know, like coming from, from the right place. So, yeah, but it is over time they see that and over time they, they are comfortable to, to, to open up. Um, Russell says, so true. I got to know you and Quibus uh, for about two plus years on LinkedIn first before we met in person. Yes. Uh, and what a relationship that has become, Russell. So it's amazing. Glad you did that. Uh, Rizan, so true on passion. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Yes. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, and then Franz says, compelling takeaways from your reflections over your 50 shows. Powerful and passionate compilation. Thank you very much, Quibus. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, that's my story for today. I will see you back on Monday morning, 8 o'clock. So we're going to keep it 8 a.m. every single day. We will still record it. You will still get it. Uh, I will still send out the the uh, notifications via WhatsApp. But by far, the majority of people want to hear from uh, via WhatsApp what we're doing. So we will keep on with that. Uh, but thank you very much for spending your time with me. I hope you have a lovely day. Uh, enjoy Mother's Day tomorrow. Don't forget Mother's Day. Um, if it's too late, phone Net Florist, okay, um, <laughs> or check them out on the internet. Uh, maybe you can save some face there. But yeah, enjoy. And uh, as I said before, thank you very much for for being here and for all your support and all of that. Please go check out Louis' episode as well as Ross's episode. And I'll see you back uh, tomorrow for a uh, lot tomorrow on Monday <laughs> for more. And uh, keep well. Thank you very much. I appreciate you and love you all. Bye bye. <laughs>